said it's not easy being green. Marcel Kittle making it look easy in the green jersey, cruising to his fourth stage win of this Tour de France. He now has 13 all-time. Congratulations to him most ever by a German rider. The celebrations and the hugs afterward. We've seen this three times already. Marcel Kittle winning for the fourth time already. This is only stage 10. Go ahead and hydrate. We'll see how many more you can get. Thanks for coming back with us, Paul Burmeister, alongside Bob Roll and Christian Vandeveld. His fourth win was the most what, Bob? Most dramatic display of power and speed so far. This is why you don't help quick step with the chase. They had the fresh legs, Sabatini, brilliant lead out. The tactics were absolutely flawless. And when they get it so right, Marcel Kittle, he is the man. That was awesome. Dominating. I mean, at first I was thinking he was way too far back. And then I saw him moving up with so much ease. And Sabatini did a great job. Sabatini is his last lead out man. Steve Barr's ahead of that. Sabatini's like a Jedi, just riding through there, completely calm. And you want, you want to have complete confidence in your lead out man. You don't want to be questioning what he's doing. He's just relaxed, following him, trusting every move he does. He actually let Sabatini go a little bit before the last corner. And then he just started picking off heel one. Then he started unleashing, but way out. We couldn't even see. We have a great vantage point here. I could barely see him out there. And then I just saw the green monster stomping. Right. <laughs> and then at first, he, was, he had so much of a gap. He almost questioned. How he started sitting up a little bit early, but he had so much when you saw the helicopter view. Domination. Unbelievable. And I saw the exact same thing you did as we were watching the monitor and also turning back and watching it uh, just behind us. My question is how? How does a guy win a sprint by that much? Well, his team is brilliant, and he is the fastest guy. He has the magic this year. He's always been one of the very best sprinters. But this is a great, the, this is a great display of what he had to go through. There is, on the front, the teammates of Andre Greipel and Nasser Buhani. But watch how far back he comes from. And he's timed it. Once he starts opening up, he really hits Jeez. the jets right there. So no one can find his wheel. So nobody has the benefit of his draft. So when he, when he got to the front line, an extra burst of speed, nobody could find the draft. So nobody can come around the fastest man in this bike race. When you're really looking at that, you see Degenkolb right on the wheel of Kittle. And he has the best lead out that you could ever imagine. And Degenkolb, we, we all know how strong he is. One Paris-Roubaix, he can't even stay on the wheel. The amount of power that Marcel has, if, he's, if the door is wide, wide open for him, or he makes his own doors for that matter, in going from as far out as he is, especially with a high speed running like that, really Lotto did everything they could have possibly have done. Greipel ends up 12th place. A lot of work out there on the road by Lotto, and like we were saying before, don't let him, don't help him out just for him to wipe the floor with you yet again. So Marcel Kittle. You just saw how he did it and how impressive he was doing it. His fourth stage win. That's his 13th all-time, most ever by a German rider. He also had four stage wins in 2013 and 14. An excellent chance uh, to have his best showing all-time. Here's what he had to say right after the win. I'll taste how sweet is this one. Oh, uh, I can't really believe it. It's number four, so... That's uh, actually an incredible amount of Tour de France and just, uh, to just win it in one tour. Is, I can't believe it. I'm so happy. Really, it's it's super nice. Uh, the team worked again so hard, and um, yeah, I'm just speechless. It's uh, I'm really really happy. You become the uh, record holder of uh, victories for a, for a German on the Tour de France. Does that mean something for you? <laughs> of course, it means something for me. Um, I don't know, it's, it, I mean, I won now so many stages in the Tour and I never expected that when I was uh, starting my career, I never really expected to be in the Tour. I was dreaming maybe at one point to become a professional, but that I would be at this level uh, with that, those wins um, is for me hard to imagine and I'm just, uh, yeah, I feel like I live in a small little bubble in a small little world that is not really true. You looked extremely powerful today, coming from behind again. Yeah, I think I had a pretty good, um, a pretty good spot because uh, it was still relatively far, with 500 to go after the last last left corner. So I uh, saw that uh, McClay started to sprint very early to come to the front, and that was my lead out. So uh, from there on, um, I exactly hit the front at 
uh, I think 220 and uh, yeah, I think it's no surprise that I feel really good at the moment in the sprint and uh, yeah, bam, number four was there. Congratulations. Four stage wins only through stage 10 here. Now let's do a little easy math here. Eddie Merck's most all time in one tour, eight. He did it in 70 and 74. Kittle has four, there's four sprint stages left. Do you think he catches Merck's? No, I don't think he catches Merck's for a single Tour de France. And Freddie Merton, by the way, won eight stages in the Tour de France previously. Um, I think that he went so deep to win today's stage. Tomorrow will be a real challenge for him to repeat today's result. And, and then the breakaways might succeed, especially in the last week. Uh, Paris, I mean... I mean, I already chance. gave it to him from Paris. Yeah, I mean, there's five. Yeah, yeah that'll be there's five. five. You, you have it. I think he'd be very happy with five stage wins out of uh, this Tour de France. Maybe six, but not eight. No way. Huh? And smile on his face and says a whole lot. The smile of a guy who's won four stages already through stage 10, 2017 Tour de France. We're going to take a break from praising Marcel Kittle, the man in green, the winner once again. We saw Marcel Kittle cruise to his fourth stage win. Arms risen above his head. On the stage podium, your stage 10 stage winner. Impressive sprint. Matt, that was really, really a remarkable today sprint by Marcel Kittle, the stage winner. Fastest got here. Now, also, there's a few guys have gone home injured, he crashed. But uh, at the moment, no one's coming anywhere near Marcel with the sprints. Christian did not get an accent during the break. That was Matt White, the uh, team director of Orica Scott. And we'll say hello to him here in just a moment. Uh, Chris Froome remains in the yellow jersey, still by 18 seconds over Fabio Aru, just as he was to start the stage. Continues to separate himself from the competition. Chris Froome atop the yellow jersey podium once again. Froome, another rest day more or less. After yesterday, flat day into Bergerac. Team pulled actually on the front, keeping him out of trouble, out of harm's way up in the front. Best place to be. Great defense by Team Sky yet again. Tomorrow should be more of the same, most likely. From the yellow jersey, which still belongs to Chris Froome, we go to the white jersey. That goes to the best rider under 25, and it continues. Strong hold for Simon Yates, just under three minutes with the lead right there. Chris Froome in yellow. Here's what he had to say afterward. Chris, I heard you say that you can enjoy the second week of the tour, and we had so much stress for various reasons in the first week. What is it about the second week that you have a perspective on that allows you to get comfortable and enjoy it? I think the, the biggest thing is that the general classification has taken a little bit of sh a little bit more shape now. Once you go past the top 10, guys have already s lost a few minutes. It's, it's not so close anymore. You don't have 200 guys all thinking that they might today might be the day they go into the yellow jersey. Um, so I think that contributes a lot to the, the stress factor and people fighting for, for that front position, whereas now people are, it's as if the whole race is just relaxed a little bit. Guys are are willing to sit a little bit further back and, and say, well, you know what, it's not going to change my race right now if I sit here or if I sit right up front. So it, it does just relax the whole the whole feeling in the peloton. And the experience you have of holding the yellow jersey at this point in the race, what does that do to your frame of mind as you look ahead at the next challenges down the road coming up in the Pyrenees? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was actually just told earlier, this is uh, my 50th day in the yellow jersey, um, which, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's a nice feeling. Um, and certainly it's, it's not something that's new to me at the moment. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm grateful for every day I've had in yellow. And ev every day that I am in yellow, I am able to sit up front and stay out of trouble. And um, I've got to say, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable in that position. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.
Well, tomorrow going to be another sprint stage, Bob. When's the next stage? It's going to be a Chris Froome GC kind of day. Yeah, day after tomorrow. So tomorrow, business as usual. We've seen on stage number nine, the Tour de France can turn upside down in the blink of an eye. So tomorrow especially, Chris Froome has to stay out of trouble. It's Perry Good finishing climb of a big stage in the Pyrenees the day after. So tomorrow was critical, and uh, Team Sky was flawless today. They did not feel any pressure from any of the other GC riders, and so Chris Froome recuperated as much as he could on a pretty tough stage, which was designed for the sprinters. Yeah, pseudo rest day for Chris Froome and Team Sky. Got to the front, say a little defense, staying protected up to the front. More of the same tomorrow. I don't want to say he's getting too comfortable because he never is. He's one of those guys who's always aware of his surroundings and aware of the height of the responsibility of being that yellow jersey and being safe at all times and his team. So I think the team knows exactly what they're doing going into the Pyrenees.